Hi, I'm Semyon Yakov. This presentation is entitled Diode Clamper, Clipper, Snubber, Doubler, RC Restore, and Overvoltage Clamp. And this is a recap just to, to go over this basic circuit and to see intuitively how they are working. So here are the circuits I'm going to talk about. We have here the clamper or the clipper in or snubber sometimes it's called or limiter. And this circuit is used to clip or to limit the value of the output voltage so that if the in input goes to over a given value, it'll clip it or clamp it. And so this is this uh, circuit here. And then we have a snubber. Now the purpose of the snubber is really not to snub or clamp, but it's different and I'm going to talk about it. And then we have the DC restorer or voltage doubler. Here we have this capacitor at the input. And then I have here the peak detector and the purpose of which is to get the maximum value of say a signal here like the maximum value here and here so we're going to have a signal an output signal that looks something like that and finally i brought here a over voltage clamp for a half a bridge so let's go over these one by one and just see in general how they operate i'm not going to go into very fine details or analysis but rather to see the overall picture of each one of the circuits. So here we have this uh, clamper. The idea is that if you have a voltage here, and if it exceeds the value of this voltage plus the drop of the diode, this could be a zener diode, then of course it will be limited. Okay, so it will be limited like this if the input goes above this value. Now it is important to realize that when this voltage is indeed above this uh, threshold, then there is a current. So if the resistance is very small, then you'll have a very high current, which could be dangerous, could be damaging to this uh, diode. And if this could be a zener diode, it might damage it too. On the other hand, if the resistance is very la it's larger, not very large, but larger, then it will sort of limit the output current that you have. Now, after all, there is, this is the input, and th there might be a load here, and obviously, if the resistance is high, then it will sort of be a voltage divider. So there is a need to, for a compromise between two conflicting requirements. Now, this clamp circuit is using the very popular converter, the flyback. And the purpose here is to limit the peak voltage that will develop when the transistor is turned off. When it is off and there is a current through this leakage inductance, then without this clamping uh, circuit, you might have a very high voltage generated because you are interrupting a current of an inductor. So to remedy this, we can use this uh, clamp. I'm showing here now an RC arrangement. It could be a zener diode. And the idea is that when you have this uh, turn off situation, the current will be passing through here and at steady state, there will be some voltage here, so it will be clamped to this voltage. Now, the voltage is generated by the current which is passing through this diode, and eventually it is actually drained by the resistor, because without the resistor, the voltage will keep going up. So you need a balance, a steady state between the energy coming in and the energy dissipated through the resistor. A common mistake is to assume that the energy that goes into the circuit is the energy of this leakage inductance. That is I square L over two. This is energy times the frequency. That's the energy. And then it should be equal to the energy dissipated by the resistor. However, this is a mistake. And that is because it doesn't take into account that when this transistor is off, energy is indeed pumped to the output, but there is a reflected voltage to the input. So the current that goes into this R circuit is passing through this voltage sort, reflected voltage sort. Actually, it is taking some of the energy from the output to this path here. So that the total energy now is the energy of the leakage inductance 
plus the energy that's coming out of this reflected source, which is the average current times the reflected voltage. Now, I'm not going into the details here, so I'm not developing the actual expression for the voltage that will be generated here. And then we have this number. Now, the name sort of uh, gives an association of something which is clipped or snubbed, but this is not the case. This number is a name for a circuit that actually slows down the rate of the rise of the voltage across the transistor. When the transistor is turned off, the current of the inductor, I'm showing it coming in, will charge the output capacitance of the transistor, and then the voltage will go up. This will coincide with the current going down, and then the voltage across the transistor is going up because this, this current is charging the capacitor. Now, there is an overlap now between the current and the voltage, and this overlap means power loss. So if we can slow down the rate of the rise of the voltage, then we can minimize this overlap. And this can be done by actually the snubber. And the snubber is adding a capacitance to the output capacitance only at the time of turn off by this diode. So that when the transistor is turned off, current now is passing through the output capacitance of the transistor and this capacitance. So the rate of rise depends now on the sum of these capacitances, and obviously the rate will be lower. So this is a way to slow down the rate at which the voltage across the capacitor is increasing. Unfortunately, in this circuit, in order to be ready for the next cycle, the capacitor has to be discharged. Now, this is done by this resistor now, which is now discharging the capacitor when the transistor is on. Now, if the resistance here is larger than RD is on, then most of the power will go to this resistor, and this is a loss. And of course, depending on the size of the capacitor and the frequency, the power could be fairly high because we have a CV square over 2 times the frequency. So this circuit can actually dissipate a lot of power, and this is why it's not used that widely. There are some lossless snubbers, which I'm not discussing in this presentation. And under use of this same snubber could be for clamping the over voltage of a transistor where it is turned off. When the transistor is turned off, and there are some strain ductances here, and this strain ductance plus the parasitic capacitances will cause an overshoot. Now, if we add a large capacitor in parallel, then of course the amplitude of this peak will go down, it will sort of damp it, and therefore it will sort of uh, serve as an overvoltage protection. However, again, since this snubber is being discharged every cycle, then the power loss in this case will be very high. So this is not a very good approach. On the other hand, here is a clever solution, which is applicable for a half bridge. And this is an overvoltage clamp. Now, in this case, the voltage of the capacitor is kept constant, or just about constant, the bus voltage. You can see that when this transistor is on, the capacitor is charged to the bus. Okay. And now when the lower transistor is turned off, this charged capacitor serves as a clamp to the overvoltage here due to this parasitic uh, oscillation. And the voltage of the capacitor will rise somewhat, but not a lot, depending on the size of the capacitor, of course. And then you have to discharge it, make it ready for the next cycle. And this is done by having a resistor which goes down to the bus. So we are sort of equalizing again the voltage to the bus voltage by this bleeder. And some of the energy, as you can see, is actually going back to the bus. So it's saving some energy. But the main point of this circuit is that the capacitor is not discharged to zero like the regular snubber. And here we have the upper side, which is operating the same way. You see that 
when the lower transistor is on, then the capacitor is charged to the bus. And then again, if there's some oscillation here, then the capacitor, the large capacitor will sort of clamp. And then we have this DC restore, which also works uh, like a voltage doubler for an AC signal. So here we have the capacitor in series. And the idea is that for this connection of the diode, when the voltage at the input is negative, then the capacitor will be charged to the input, save the voltage drop on the diode. So this capacitor is charged to the negative voltage here. Now, when we have the positive voltage, then we have a positive voltage plus this voltage and the polarity now is that it is being added. So we have now a pulse, which the height is the negative part plus the positive part. So, and then it is referred to ground. Now, the origin of this circuit is really analog TV, because in an analog TV, we have synchronization pulses, which are transmitted as an AC signal, and then you have to restore them to zero to get the pulses referred to the ground. And this is why this name of a DC restore, it's sort of restoring the pulses to the ground reference. When you have an AC signal coming in, then again, the capacitor will be charged to the ne maximum negative value, to the peak negative value. And then when you have the positive part, it will be added. So you'll have a signal which is twice the input signal. And this is why we call it also a voltage doubler, because you have a twice the voltage. The, the amplitude here is twice the amplitude of this uh, AC signal, assuming it's symmetrical, of course. And then I have here the peak detector. The idea here is to get an output, which is the maximum value of the incoming signal, okay? So we get a signal like this at the output, which is the maximum of this. Now, this is done by having a diode, which is charging a capacitor. So if you have a signal, the capacitor is being charged. There is a resistor here, which discharges, of course, the capacitor for the next cycle. And then you have the next cycle coming in. So you have a signal which is just about the peak value. However, there is a problem of time constant here because if after this high peak value you have a lower peak, it'll take a while until the voltage across the capacitor will drop to a lower value so that it will stabilize at the lower amplitudes that might be coming in. So there is again a consideration here of how fast do you need this uh, big detector, sometimes you can add a switch here that will sort of uh, discharge the capacitor after a certain time. So in this case, you are not going to have a resistor, just the switch discharging the capacitor, making it ready for the next cycle. So this is the end of this short presentation. I hope that this uh, overview will be helpful to sort of uh, distinguish between the various uh, circuits around the diode and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.